Good morning from the sunny Okanagan. Yes, January 19, 2019. It's a Saturday and the sun's out. There's a few clouds in the horizon and I see blue sky. I feel good. So it's time to make another video and I am telling you, I am really ticked off. I am sick and tired of having to be politically correct and self-censoring what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, because I don't want to offend anyone. There are, you know, so many words you can't say. You can use the abbreviation or actually the first letter so that people know what you're talking about, but you can't say the word. That's not politically correct. You know, uh, the R word referring to somebody that has mental disability, you can't say that anymore. And some people might say, that's good because they belong to the Generation Snowflake. I say, shut the hell up and grow a pair. You know, our media is always talking about having the rights and freedoms to say and print whatever. But you and I don't have that same ability because we're going to be labeled. And Trudeau and his snowflakes can kiss my big hairy behind. I'm not going to be politically correct anymore. There are so many fronts, so many fronts where people are being shut up and shut down. It doesn't mean that our thoughts are changed. If anything, there's going to be more inert anger building when you won't be able to say what you're really thinking, such as, and this is global, by the way, toxic masculinity. This came out last week. Gillette, the razor company, Procter & Gamble, they had an idea for a big ad campaign which emphasized male masculinity as being toxic. Men are violent, unemotional, sexually aggressive, and so forth. Oh, we are an awful bunch, aren't we? Unlike women who are, well, they're not violent. They're certainly not unemotional. And, oh, sexually aggressive? Well, women aren't. I mean, they're the fair damsels in distress that we male predators predate on. What a load of crap. Now, can you imagine, you know, this male tox uh, toxic masculinity... Imagine taking it to the hockey arenas. Men, you're too toxic. Stop body checking. Stop hitting each other. Stop fighting. And stop keeping a score because some of the flakes might get upset when their team loses. And by the way, we should also be fair. Maybe a third of the team could be men. A third could be women. A third could be mix of minorities. That's how it should be because we have to be fair to everyone. What a load of baloney. Men and women are different. And it's not just about men and women. There are so many things going on. Not only in Canada or the USA, but globally. It's happening in the UK. I listen to a lot of broadcasts from the UK. You wouldn't believe the crap that's taking place there. And if anything, it's almost like worse than here. What they're trying to do, and this is a liberal, globalist, geoliberal, knee, blah, 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 whatever agenda. Breaking news! January 1, 2018. BBC chief stunned a secret staff sex survey reveals 417 of the corporation's workers are transgender. So think about this. Big cor corporations, you know, that have thousands and thousands of employees, do a sex survey to find out what their employees are, whatever. Which I think should be, or is against the law in many places. But anyway, they find out they have a lot of transgender. That's diverse, that's good. But what about lesbians, gays, bisexuals? He did not, this is the head of the BBC, did not regard the BBC as diverse enough, claiming more lesbians were needed. Lesbians! When it can, now imagine this, you're a journalist, you're really good, you're at the top of your field, you apply for a job with the BBC, but damn it, you're not a lesbian, you're not gay, you're not transgender, you're not whatever. You don't get a job because it has to be one of those minority roles.
And there you have just one example where toxic masculinity, masculinity will not be welcome at the BBC. Another place it won't be welcome, I'm sure, is in the Justin Trudeau government. The liberals, they're not going to have anyone masculine in there. Even though Trudeau has had a history of using colorful language with that piece of crap comment in the parliament and also boxing with a conservative senator. He doesn't want to come off as being masculine because people love the fact that he is very in touch with women's needs and issues and all these other things that you have to have your hand on your feelings and you've got to be able to share it no matter how, what, whenever. It's just part of being a good man. U.S. students and parents are outraged after transgender teen sprinter breaks records. This was a great story. Anyway, this fine-looking young woman, actually born as a male, but now identifying as a female, was in competition. And she won. She smoked the ladies running against her. Don't know how that could happen, but... Uh, Terry Miller, who was born a male but now identifies as a female, came in first place twice during the June 4th state open track meet and field competition. During the 100-meter dash, Miller smoked her competition, finishing the race in just 11.72 seconds. She also killed in the 200-meter dash. Now, <clears throat> parents are ticked off. You know, I mean, you know, transgender is fine. and But then you realize that there are consequences to actions, unintended consequences. By the way, one of the later stories, this just out in the last couple of weeks, is uh, I think it was in North or South Dakota that uh, they're trying to stop this because, again, males identifying with females don't make for a fair competition. And... Uh, now, this is another great story. Scary capital letters melt snowflakes. Daily Telegraph, November 19, 2018. Oh, my God, they're using capital letters. No, stop it. Leeds Trinity School of Journalism students are apparently alarmed by anything not written in a combination of lower case and emojis. Oh, we're not talking about, you know, five and six year old pre elementary, pre pre kindergartners. These are university students. So now the lecturers have been told not to use words in capital letters when setting assignments because it might frighten students into failure. Course leaders say capitalizing a word could emphasize the difficulty or high stakes nature of the task oh my god you don't want to have young people prepare, prepared for life after school with high stress and fear and competition and all this you know because well they can't take it these poor little boys and girls they just gonna be babied along you know give them a soother send them on their way you know justin trudeau made a comment about people kind. You know, it's not mankind, not firemen, not policemen, not uh, you know, whatever you want to talk about, but it's people kind, people police, or I don't know, I don't know how you would say that. And then he says, this is Trudeau, we like to say people kind, not necessarily mankind, because it's more inclusive. More inclusive? Hello. You know, there's some places, this is going to just really freak out a lot of people out there, but in my opinion, there's some things that men can do better than women, just like there are some things that women can do better than men. There is a difference between the sexes, uh, for some reason anyway, that's how it's always been. And now, we're going to change that. We're going to make everyone equal, whether they are or not, it doesn't matter. What a load of rubbish. Now, one of the things that really brought my attention onto this in the last little while is YouTube has a lot of great programming, including comedies. And no, not about a little kitty chasing a ball or a laser point, whatever, but stand-up comedians. And uh, the other night, you know, I was so tired of all this BS on cable news and TV, nothing to watch, even though it's a new season. 
that I tuned into YouTube and found Jimmy Carr, stand-up comedy. Some of the shows are hour and 15 minutes, hour and a half, two hours long, stand-up comedy. Jimmy Carr is a uh, king of one-liners, and uh, I know it will offend some people, some of his comedy and some of what he says, but don't watch it. It's simple. Don't watch it. But one of the things that's happened in the last little while with these snowflakes and issues, and even Jerry Seinfeld in the States said that he's not going to do any more uh, stand-up comedy in universities because too easy to offend people. So they're censoring themselves or just saying, hell, it's not worth it. Well, I was watching and laughing at Jimmy Carr. And I thought, well, great, but he couldn't do that today. A lot of these programs are years 10 years five years older they're older shows in my opinion hilarious as hell they point out just the stupidity of stuff but like i said in today's politically correct world there's nobody you don't know netflix would fund a show like that if he's being that politically incorrect and it's not only uh jimmy carr sarah mcmillan Two-hour comedy specials. Very funny lady from the UK. Never heard of her before, to be quite honest. And uh, again, on YouTube, Sarah McMillan. Uh, great shows. Two hours long, some of her shows. There's two of them on, especially Chatterbox is one of them. And uh, hilarious stuff. I love it. Cindy was laughing out loud watching it. She liked it so much. I didn't laugh out loud. I chuckled a few times. But I really loved it. It was great humor. Again, it's on humans. It's about people, about experiences. It's got saucy language. It's got situations, whatever. It's very politically incorrect, some of the stuff. I mean, I can't tell you. You know, some of the stuff is really politically incorrect and will offend people. Same with Jimmy Carr. Same with a lot of the comedians. Now, how bad has our world gotten when comedians who are supposed to make people laugh and feel good have to censor themselves or else just say hell with it you know comedy was fun 10 15 20 years ago it isn't now i mean i remember the good old days watching uh, don rickles you know he'd stand on stage and basically call everyone out and whatever people and it, it was funny he wasn't doing it mean-spirited it was just a ha-ha laugh and he could make fun of someone for their clothes, for their appearance, for their hair. By the way, Jimmy does that also in, in the stand-up routines. Sometimes, sometimes, whatever. It's a ha-ha moment. But you can't do that in our politically correct world. Like I said, Don Wrinkles from the good old days, he wouldn't stand a chance today. He wouldn't be on air, not on national TV, not prime time. Remember the Dean Martin show, anyone out there? Oh, so sexist, that Dean Martin, I mean, I tell you. And I'm really surprised that nobody out there has yet come down on Elvis Presley. Because, man, you know, when he was a soldier in Germany and brought his young girlfriend back, I mean, what, she was 14 years old and he's an adult? I mean, they, they just I'm surprised they haven't come down on Elvis Presley yet and started banning his music his records his movies and demonizing him because that's one of the things that you're going to do today is demonize ideas people situations demonize everything demonize the hell out of russia i never realized how bad russia was treated until more recently that i've you know tuned into a few uh documentaries about hollywood propaganda and stuff like that think back to what basically the late 40s and on after world war ii whenever a bad guy was pointed to whenever there was a bad country an evil doer people that spied that killed that had you know funny names and funny looks it was always russians you had to be afraid of russians hollywood demonized the hell out of russia and russians do you think that's just by coincidence you don't think that there is some NSA, CIA, FBI involvement in the movie industry and stuff like that. It goes all the way up to James Bond. It goes all the way to today. Even you watch 
today these these past seasons of shows and they still demonize Russian it builds that narrative you know you can't trust Russians you can't trust a Rusky uh, their evilness is in their DNA they lie they cheat I mean here in the North America we have open free press they can do and print whatever they go after politicians in Russia anywhere else in the world actually not just Russia they just tell lies can you trust a Russian newspaper to be honest? Come on, ask yourself. Do you think Russians get the truth or are they lied to? And do you think we get the truth or are we lied to? These things aren't coincidental. They all connect into this new world order that's being shaped and formed right before our eyes. But people don't see it because they're caught up in it. And now they're getting too scared to comment about it because they're going to be attacked. Look at what happened to uh, Ke Kevin Hart and the uh, hosting of the, uh, the Oscar show. Things that he said, what was it, how many years ago that he's apologized for? Well, we're not going to let that guy get up on stage. He's going to have to keep apologizing for the rest of his life. What's the deal about that? You know, and the media doesn't stand by his side and say, look, he's a Paul. Grow up, pair people. Get over it. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let's start being adults. Hell no. They play up on it because it's great press. It's great media. It gets ratings. That's what it's about for them. Not about changing people's ideas and saying, you know, we used to have a lot more common sense back then than we have today. So I'm not going to worry about being politically correct if I offend some people too bad. Uh, I'm going to say things how I see it. It doesn't make it right. It doesn't mean that I am correct. I am just the almighty seer. But I'm just going to you know, talk about what I see, how I see things. And uh, I think more of us should be able to do that than to have to censor ourselves and hide away our feelings, our emotions, whatever. And then you have some toxic masculinity. At least that's the way I see it.